Very simply, collectivism is better than individualism because it has a plan for ensuring the individual is actually looked after by society as its whole purpose. It literally gives people collective access to something. I would say then that collectivism is actually better at individualism than individualism is. But before we go any further, in case that wasn't confusing enough, I think it would be very helpful to define these two concepts, just to make sure we're all on the same page here. Collectivism is quite basically the collectivization of goods in society, especially productive property that adds to GDP somehow. Things like natural resources, whole industries, agricultural land, financial systems, workplaces, housing, etc. These things can be collectivized, held in common, so that all people, the public, can have access to them. Like the idea of having, you know, basic human rights. <sighs> like if that was real. Collectivism has nothing to do with the Soviet Union, Nazi Germany, or hardcore authoritarian regimes that are built around some cult leader. Just because a group of people have some pretty strong shared beliefs doesn't make them collectivists. If it did, every religion ever would be collectivism. So if you thought collectivism equals cold society, where individuality is given over to complete conformity, it's not your fault. That is thanks to a lot of great propaganda, actually. Now, individualism is quite basically the idea that if society focuses on ensuring individuals are as liberated as possible in a free market setting, and that is the real qualifier here, that these individuals will naturally do business and interact with others in a conscientious way that benefits not only themselves, but the entire system. Freer individuals will have an appreciation for cooperation and beneficence, which makes for a better economy. A healthy economy means a happy society. Happy, 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 happy. See, individualism only works in a market society. No other time in human history could you even justify the thought that looking out for yourself was good for society. By contrast, there has always been the commons. It's been essential to organized human life throughout history. So if you thought that making property communal is just some type of fantasy in the modern world, let's all just acknowledge here that the main idea behind individualism being so fucking good is the hope that people will do the right thing. Why is it so hard to imagine collectivizing things, but it's perfectly normal to think that self-centered individuals will be virtuous? I know this sounds very cynical, but hear me out. When individualism was being championed by its proponents over a hundred years ago and more, they had something that people don't have today, integrity and a sense of duty. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world today, and duty, being a responsible citizen, is long gone today. Collectivism, though, doesn't work on wishful thinking. It acknowledges people suck, and that's why private property rights shouldn't be allowed to get out of control. Like when a company steals an entire nation's natural resources, or a corporation puts a patent on a possible cure for cancer. We need to be realistic and orchestrate society so that productive property and important resources are accessible to all individuals, not just a select few who have the power to get it. It is this orchestration part that people object to because it wouldn't be freedom if people can't claim rights over something and exclude everyone else from it. That is some warped mental gymnastics if you think about it. Measuring freedom on one person, being able to exclude literally the entire rest of the human race from something. Collectivizing means access for all and is anti a single person or a group getting exclusive rights over social goods, not your stuff and your personal identity. It is a common mistake and I'll correct it. Collectivism does not suppress individuality and personality, it limits property rights. No wonder why the establishment trashes it. Ironically, 
Individualism itself has nothing to do with creating real conditions for free individuals. No, it is simply one of the fairy tales behind the free market mythology. The creation of free individuals is a Trojan horse to wedge in a privatization agenda, upholding the individual's right to own property is the end game here. What a coincidence that that also directly benefits our economic elites. You think it's it's by coincidence or do you think it's by design? They don't care about liberty. Most people that love individualism acknowledge that you need a strong government to police and protect, guess what? Property. Talk about a paradox. Liberated individuals backed by a powerful police state. Like with most Free market fantasies like trickle down economics and tax cuts for the rich, individualism really only works for a select few individuals. Not all individuals. Want something. But let's look at the main critiques of collectivism from people who love individualism. Collectivism has never been global, so naturally it includes some and it excludes others. Not so collective after all. <sighs> so, let me get this straight. Just because it doesn't include everyone on Earth means it's not really collective. God, that's childish. Collective exists in plurality, with traits like race, religion, wealth, status, nationality, etc. And so there is no one collectivist ideology that unites all, but many separate doctrines that all request decent people to submit to their ways. Look. Like we have been discussing already, collectivism is about getting people access to common goods and building that into the structure of society. I don't think it should have anything to do with adhering to social constructs, like a supreme culture. If people are mixing collectivism with totalitarianism, thanks to decades of Western propaganda, there is not much we can do but say, no, it's not that. The goals of the collective are not those of members, but of those in power only. Again, people are using authoritarian and totalitarian regimes as being synonymous with collectivism here. That is a false premise, and so this one falls over too. But this is particularly annoying because people pretend like everything is so rosy in the individualist free market world. Like political leaders do what's right by the people and never advance their own agendas. Like what are people smoking? It's some strong shit. I want some, damn. The real problem with collectivism. Like let's just take a moment to acknowledge that the same people that critique collectivism are from the same cultures that build their foundation, not on radical individualism, like pure uncut individual freedom, no, but cultures where private property reigns supreme. And where, since the rise of neoliberalism 50 years ago, more and more public assets, already collectivized goods, have been privatized and social systems like welfare and public healthcare systems have been defunded and eroded strategically. If we were honest about individualism, it wouldn't be this flimsy bullshit about people who are most free to exchange with one another responsibly, but it would be just about the maximization of private property rights for individuals who can afford to pay. Individuals include corporations too, might I add. The problem with collectivism is entirely this. It doesn't stack up. No, actually it threatens the free market principles of private property and ruthless profiteering. Collectivism advocates for a society that actually has a plan to look after all individuals by protecting common assets for use by people. And because this threatens the big end of town only, it's been slandered in history books and in the media as meaning evil dictatorships, genocide and the sacrifice of your individuality in the altar of conformity. This is propaganda, and rightly so. It's scary how simple collectivism really is. If it's important for society, make it a common good for the benefit of all and to avoid its exploitation by a select few. That is some revolutionary shit and would change the way the world works instantly. No wonder it's such a problem. 
Now, if you like this video, subscribe for more and share this video with people you think need to hear it. And hit that like button. Remember, I am, you are, we are a mystery.